Welcome, everybody. We are ready to get started with our weekly webinar. I am going to switch over and share my screen. I'm using my fingers on my mouse, and it doesn't always work that way. And now, as usual, everything populates to where the buttons I want to hit. Yay, now we've gotten started. All right, thanks for joining us on this Wednesday weekly webinar, when, weekly Wednesday webinar. Um, today we are featuring uh, some guest artists and excited to continue to help promote the action activities in the near west side. Uh, to get started, you know, I put these pictures in because did you all know we have a neighborhood turkey in the near west side? Specifically, uh, I'm gonna say the valley um, and I think our turkey lives um, in the Miller, on the Miller, or I should say Molson Coors property. So the other night I was taking a walk and there's the turkey in the middle of the street at 37th <clears throat> and State Street. And I was so worried about the turkey getting hit. And of course he's staying in the middle of the street. So I end up chasing him down the street. The turkey's running and takes a turn to where you can get into the first drive there down on um, the Molson property. And then the next day, somebody sent a picture of um, our turkey at what looks like Molson property staying nice and warm. So somehow I thought it just was going to be fun that if you didn't know there, we have some uh, wildlife in our urban neighborhoods, there you go. And maybe we could make this a fun little contest of who, who spotted the turkey and name him. So consider that. And that's my fun for the day. Uh, upcoming uh, updates for the Near West Side Partners. Uh, we do have a community meeting next week and on the 25th at 7 p.m. There is an organization, Bethesda Lutheran Community Cornerstone or Services or Properties. I apologize. Bethesda Lutheran Community Properties is potentially going to be putting a um, housing complex in the near west side at 3200 Highland and we are offering a platform for a listening session. So if you do are interested in hearing more about that, please join. Also, we'd love to hear your questions prior to the event. So let me know if you have a specific question for them. We'll get them queued up so that you're, they're ready to be answered. And then next week, instead of our weekly webinar being with the PCOR, Patient-Centered Outcome Research for Employees uh, uh, topic, we are partnering with Advocate Aurora and they are doing a town hall meeting and so about the vaccines and that's something we've been wanted to highlight since the vaccines rolled out and this couldn't have been better timed it is actually february 24th at noon so next week please do tune in you can learn more about the uh, vaccine it's going to be a q a with <clears throat> two physicians and um, hopefully put some minds at ease because it really is important we all get out and get that vaccine um, and uh, same premise. So if you have any questions, again, let me know. And if you do want to uh, give, have a question for the, the evening event on Thursday, contact me at coordinator2 at nearwestsidepartners.org. It's snowing more. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's really important we do get our sidewalks cleaned. We have a population on Highland, on State, on our corridors, 27th, 35th, that are walking, taking buses, and it's really important we all take time to clean up those sidewalks. And if you've been able to do that and see a neighbor in need, please do help. And maybe a corner in need uh, it make a difference for a lot of people by just doing that kind act. We're still in COVID. Remember, wear your mask, stay six feet apart, avoid crowds, and wash your hands. So even as those vaccines are rolling in, we definitely want um, those um, ac actions to continue until uh, we're all, all vaccinated and a whole lot safer. And then today we are going to talk a bit more about the Near West Side Action Activities. That's part of our Choice Neighborhood Initiative HUD grant. And we are going to be installing neighborhood markers in each of the seven neighborhoods. And with that, we've been going through a process of meeting with our neighborhoods. And then this is our final presentation to let our neighbor, our, our artists go in and just kind of hone in and start making something unique for each neighborhood. So I'm going to introduce 
Anna Weirich. She is going to give us an update on the Choice Neighborhood activities and then um, interview our two artists, Andre and Brandon. Anna? Thanks, Barb. Um, so I am really excited to provide an update today on our Choice Neighborhood Action Activities and then spend some time talking about the neighborhood markers. Um, so just kind of a, a reminder of how we've gotten to where we're at right now with the, the six projects. Um, back in April of last year, um, we put out a Google form, put out a call on email and listservs and text for residents of the Near West Side to submit ideas for community improvement projects um, that we could then work on um, as a community together. Um, and those projects would be funded by HUD through our Choice Neighborhood Initiative grant. Um, so we had over 50 ideas submitted back in April. Um, we, we took a look at the list of all those projects. Um, there are definitely um, some overlap, lots of people interested in murals or pocket parks. Um, and so combined some of those ideas, but also um, took the time to look at what HUD requires and look what, at what we could physically do um, and narrowed it down to eight projects. Um, so we submitted to HUD those eight projects. Um, they came back and said that six of them had the preliminary green lights um, and that the other two we probably um, should seek other funding for. They're good ideas, um, but not with the, the funding source through them. So uh, we moved forward with those six projects, had a lot of different meetings uh, over the fall, collecting uh, ideas about each project, um, as well as doing some more surveys and um, working with vendors and city officials to kind of put a budget together on how we can bring these projects to light. Um, and then we submitted our six projects, our full proposal to HUD uh, back in early December. And then in early February, um, we got uh, official approval that these projects will move forward, which we're very excited about um, and very excited that 2021 is going to see a lot of uh, great physical change across the neighborhood uh, because of these action activities. Um, and we're also excited how spread out the activities are as well. Um, so there's over 20 different sites for these six projects. Um, and so we're really excited that each neighborhood of the near west side is going to see at least one thing, uh, actually probably multiple, um, and very excited about these. So we'll go through each of the projects now. So Barb, uh, next slide, please. Oops, sorry, wrong button. There you go. Awesome. So FACTS Triangle. Um, so this is the triangle median at uh, 35th and State as you're kind of going down into the uh, Miller Valley there. Um, phase one of this uh, reinvention of this pocket park um, was completed in phase one of our action activities. So a part of the HUD grant is uh, we originally had $50,000 um, to do some early action activities, early projects to kind of get the momentum going. Um, so in conjunction with the HUD funding, we also have a grant from um, MMSD. Um, and so you'll see some of the change already going on at uh, 35th and State for phase one. Um, then we kind of had to break it up, stop for the winter. Um, the triangle is now completely covered with snow. Um, so. Once all that melts off, uh, we'll be ready to go into phase two, uh, where we'll really be focusing on beautification and safety. Um, so adding some lighting, adding some art. Um, there's going to be bioswells there that have just beautiful natural flowers. Um, so we're really excited that this uh, gateway um, is going to, to take on a whole new look. So uh, next project up is we are painting the near west side. Um, and this is what we talked about with our, um, our webinar a couple weeks ago, our mural project. Um, so we have eight murals going across the near west side. Um, one, we are working with Milwaukee High School of the Arts students um, for a mural that they're wanting to do at their school there. Um, so that's one of the eight. Um, and then we're look, working with local artists, um, those that are traditional muralists, as well as um, a couple that uh, do a little more graphic design work um, to really bring some more art to the corridors. 
Um, we did have a survey uh, to have everybody kind of learn more about the artists that'll um, be partaking in this particular project, as well as their working designs, um, and collected some feedback, particularly on the 27th in Wisconsin mural. Um, and so we got a lot of great feedback, um, and now we're working with our artists, as well as our property owners. Um, who actually own the buildings that the murals are going to be going on to uh, finalize those designs and really get something uh, great going in the next couple months. Um, so be on the lookout, uh, definitely once it's a little bit warmer um, for some more art. Up next, we have the New State Music Park. Um, so this is a part of the New State developments, uh, the historic state theater there at uh, 20 between 26th and 27th uh, on State Street. Um, so there's currently the the grassy lands that's vacant um, at the corner of 26th and State. Um, and so um, Westside Arts Unlimited and the new state developments um, are working to turn this into a pocket park um, that will be an outdoor music venue uh, with a stage, with seating, um, with some great uh, landscape architectural features um, to really make this a great place to be um, in the summer um, and also give a platform for a lot of our local artists, particularly our youth, to have a place to perform um, and really just uh, kind of help spur the development of the new state, uh, where eventually there'll be a cafe, a theater, a recording studio. Um, so this is kind of phase one of uh, really the redevelopment of that whole block. Um, and so we're very excited um, that we have some great partners that are very invested in the near west side um, to bring this project to fruition. Up next, we have our traffic calming planters. Um, so all of the planters, uh, there will be 22 of them, um, will be installed along 27th Street. Um, so this will go along with the city's rapid implementation project, um, which has done the painting as well as the plastic bollards um, that were kind of installed back in August. Um, so uh, traffic calming and traffic safety have been a primary concern of residents. Um, it's always um, at the top of the list on the annual resident survey. Um, so we're really hoping that these planters that will be installed um, will help slow down traffic um, and will be a deterrence from driving in the parking lane. Um, so a big concern people have about these planters is what happens uh, if they get hit. Um, well, the good news is that we are ordering extra so that we're able to uh, clean up the mess and put in a new one um, if that does happen. Um, but also people have gotten a lot more used to having the plastic bollards and the painting there. Um, so we're hoping that'll kind of help deter any um, accidents with the, the planters. Um, and you know we will have to wait until all the snow is gone before these can be installed, but uh, very excited about those, um, as well as working with a local company to put uh, flowers in all the planters. So they're also a, 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 beautiful, a beautification for the streets as well. Up next, we have our storefront improvement program. Um, and so this is a commercial facade grants program. Uh, where 12 properties will be receiving grants uh, to help uh, reinvent their storefront, to clean it up, to get it um, either tenant ready, so ready for a new small business to move in, um, as well as for some of these properties, they already have a tenant, but hopefully cleaning up the storefront, uh, doing some new signage and lighting uh, will also help to um, get people into the stores um, that already might be open. Um, so we're really excited about this. Um, we have properties on just about every major commercial corridor. Um, so very excited um, about the investment in our corridors as well as our small businesses that will be um, filling in those buildings. And then last but certainly not least, um, and what we're going to spend the majority of today's time on are our neighborhood markers. Um, and so with this project, uh, we are installing one marker per neighborhood. Um, so one for each of our seven neighborhoods. Um, and these markers can really be thought of as kind of a, a kiosk of information. Um, so on them, there will be a little bit of the history of the neighborhood. Um, and how the neighborhood got its name, how it came to be. Um, you know, we also have uh, 
uh, a lot of indigenous ties to the layeds um, across Milwaukee and Wisconsin, but particularly in the near west side. Um, and so we also want to showcase um, that history and pay respect to the indigenous people that uh, were on this land previously. Um, we also want this to serve um, really as um, a, a point of pride of something that our neighbors are excited about. Um, we're working with DPW as well as neighbors to actually figure out the final location for each marker um, so that it's pedestrian friendly, um, so that people walk by and um, can read a little bit about the neighborhood. There'll also be a little QR code on there too. So with a smartphone, people can go by um, and look up more information about the neighborhood, um, as well as be connected to events going on in the area. Um, so we are finishing up our first round of feedback. Um, so we've met uh, six of the neighborhoods um, throughout the past couple weeks. And then today um, is Avenues West and kind of a makeup day for other people who couldn't join on their particular night. Um, so really excited to get some more feedback here. Um, and then we'll do a second round of meetings in March after our wonderful artists who you'll meet here in just a second um, are done kind of updating with the first round of the marker. Um, and so with that, um, I think we will um, kind of get out of the presentation and then ask Brandon and Andre to um, sh uh, show their, their screens here um, and we'll get to meet them. So, hi, Brandon and Andre, thank you for both joining us today. Um, so to kind of start this off, um, if you both just want to introduce yourself um, a little bit of how you've gotten engaged in arts and in Milwaukee, um, and then we can take it from there. Cool. Um, great to have everyone. Thanks for um, participating in this. My name is Brandon Minga. I am the co-founder of what is called the House of Rad. It is the House of Resident Artist Doers. Um, where we focus primarily on trying to elevate our crafts through collaboration um, and sharing of ideas and things like that. Um, I'm also, I've been a local artist here in town for got to be 16 years, 11 of which I've lived in uh, Washington Heights. We've also been doing um, a bunch of community work. Uh, we built a large mobile stage that has traveled through uh, some of the neighborhoods in the near west side. And um, I've done a couple different murals uh, in downtown and around the city um, and also been involved in um, community outreach programs with AWE, Artists and Working Education, uh, things like that. Um, so if Andre would like to introduce himself. Hello, my name is Andre St. Louis. Uh, thank you for joining us. and. Um, so I'm a local artist. I've been living in Milwaukee um, for about 24 years now. Originally came here for to attend Myad, Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. Um, uh, since the, I, I graduated from Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design, I've been designing and building uh, sculptures and furniture for the last 22 years. Um, and have been involved in a lot of community and public projects uh, over the 22 years and am currently a resident at the House of Rad um, and working with, in collaboration with a number of other artists on a number of projects. And uh, I'm just excited about this project. I think it's a lot of fun and having a lot of fun uh, getting to know people and get, getting to know more about the community. Well, thank you both for being here. Um, we're really excited to be working with y'all on this project. Um, and so um, maybe to start off, um, how, why did y'all decide to pursue this project? Um, what kind of interested you about um, th this particular um, endeavor in the near west side? Sure, um, I responded to the call to artists uh, while in collaboration with Andre. And I think it was really just about community engagement and about how we could collaborate with community members to make something that they're passionate about that welcomes folks to the neighborhood, whether they're longtime residents or passerby. Um, you know, I think that's one of our favorite things to do is really to work in collaboration, whether it is with, with artists ourselves and or uh, with, with community members. I mean, I'm, I mean, 
maybe Andre has more to add to that. I would agree. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's working with community, working with other people, but I think it's also about leaving um, important legacy items in communities and getting to know those communities while you're doing it. Um, I think that creates a lot of internal growth as an artist, as well as uh, opportunity to connect with people that often aren't as um, easy to connect with in communities. And I think that's an important thing as being an artist is, you know, to be part of the community and really encompass it as much as possible and bring it full circle and exposure to the arts. That's awesome. Well, we're very glad that y'all uh, decided to respond to the call. Um, and um, back in the fall, we did have uh, three different groups of artists submit designs for the particular uh, neighborhood markers um, and put a put a survey out. And um, by far, um, the the work of Andre and Brandon is what uh, people voted for as their their favorite. So we're we're glad to be working with them. Um, when it comes to kind of uh, your your inspiration process um, and in designing your work, um, how how do you find inspiration? How do you go about that? Um, maybe even talk about how you went about creating the first designs for these particular markers. Sure, um, and actually, I, it's really interesting that that ours uh, were very happy that people liked our design. But I think that speaks to the fact that Andre and I and uh, my studio assistant toured each one of the neighborhoods to try and find you know, significant visual elements. Um, and we did some research in terms of history and things like that. Um, that really sort of, that definitely inspired our direction and, and trying to pick or choose things that we, we felt were significant or consistent in each one of those neighborhoods. Um, you know, and in terms of the inspiration just in general i think andre and i both uh, seem to like history and want to make a statement through art with that and connect it to wherever we're at um in terms of you know where that location might be what was there before does this make sense are we paying homage or are we being respectful to you know things of the past that were here or, or things that are currently happening and one of the you know that unique uh, factors of this project is that we can represent, you know, three three periods of time, like you had suggested before, with the indigenous um, present day, how that neighborhood got its name, and then currently, what speaks to people uh, in that neighborhood as well. Andre, you want to add some to that? Sure. <laughs> I really found it just absolutely a fun project because it's one of those projects where. I've lived in Milwaukee for 24 years and you're constantly learning about the city, its growth, its development, what's going on in the city, why it's a city, why people live here. And I think it's super fun when you get to delve into a specific neighborhood. And I, 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 it took a long time as a, a, a person that moved to Milwaukee to learn about some of this history and learn about all the different neighborhoods. And when you start diving in, it really, like there's so many gems of, his, of, of what made Milwaukee, Milwaukee. And I think that's super exciting because, you know, as you're looking at it, it's exciting. Like there, there's like why, you know, how the neighborhoods developed. I mean, the people who it is, you can see the buildings, you can see the names, you can see all that stuff when you're driving through it. And, and we, as we were spending time driving through it, you know, there's rich history um, of, you know, great architecture, uh, craftsmanship, um, how the buildings change and evolve through a community. Um, you can see all that evident now and you can look at books and you can kind of see what um, we can read and what's, you know, seems to be um, the, the historical timeline. But when you really get to talk to people is when you get the personality, you get the, um, the uh, culturally rich aspect of how, it, how the communities are now and how they remember it. And that's really what we're, you know, we've been trying to tap into because it's more than just the architecture. It's more than just a couple of the businesses. It's really about the people. It's really about the rich history of Wisconsin and how the city became what it is. And it's a, it's a lot of fun to be exposed to all that. 
Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And speaking of those meetings and conversations with residents that we've been having over the past couple of weeks, um, what is one thing or what has kind of surprised you the most um, about those conversations with residents? Is there something that came up that was kind of a surprise or uh, learned something new? Yeah, I mean, right away it was, you know, the history portion from, you know, word of mouth history versus you know what versus what we read about what we know about um on google or in the history books or what have you and then also um current feelings about names or how they're spelled or um you know there's little nuances that you know we're not going to know until those folks who are actually living in that neighborhood um speak up and talk about it um so that was one of the, you know i guess a couple of things that i thought were really great and uh, surprising all at the same time. I think it's also been a handful of um, different historical elements that I just wasn't aware of that, you know, someone brought up and uh, people have brought up in the different meetings. And I think it, that's always kind of like, a, it's a fun moment to like go and search out some more information that may have not been driven up and from the get-go. And so that's really been fun for me in that aspect of saying, okay, why, questioning why the street is named the street, why the neighborhood's named the neighborhood, um, what that building is that's really interesting um, and is now a completely different business. And you can tell that it, there, there's a contrast there. Um, I think that that discovery has been a lot of fun for me. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's been great to just hear all the different tidbits um, and, you know, things that once were and how we can kind of encapsulate that into into these uh, markers. Um, and it's also been uh, for me, who is definitely not an artist, very interesting to see um, how y'all can kind of take the ideas from people and, you know, uh, very quickly be able to say this can be incorporated in the in the structure or the icons or um, it's it's very fun to watch. Um, so I've had fun with it. Um, and and with that, um, I'll turn it over to Brandon if you want to um, share your screen and uh, you and Andre kind of um, talk a little bit more about each of the two designs. Um, so there are two um, that uh, everybody kind of voted on to narrow down to. Um, and so each neighborhood um, will have one or the other or kind of a combination. Um, and so um, have Andre and Brandon talk a, talk a little bit about the differences in each um, and some of the similarities. Um, I will say one of the most interesting things um, on on the three-sided one, the one that currently is Miller Valley on, um, some of our neighbors have really liked the top piece, um, what some have affectionately uh, dubbed the Sputnik. Um, in some neighborhoods, people are all about it and then others uh, wanna see it gone. So it's been very interesting um, to kind of hear that feedback. But um, with that, I'll turn it over to, to Brandon and Andre to kind of talk about the, their designs. Cool, yeah, and I think I'll just talk about overall um, shapes and uh, those elements that, you know, the Sputnik and uh, some of the other things. And then Andre, if you wanna jump in on the finishes and the stuff we're using, um, does that seem to make sense? Sounds good. Cool. Um, so overall in each one of these, um, we've kind of gone between a three-sided sign, which is 005 on the left and a four-sided sign uh, or marker uh, on the right, 003. Um, each one of those information panels at the moment seems a little large, and I think that was in part because we weren't exactly sure how much content um, we were going to show. Um, we've kind of narrowed it down to 100 words, um, images, and things like that. Uh, each of the titles will be um, three-dimensional laser-cut metal that'll be adhered or fastened to the um, polycarbonate um, that'll then have um, printed vinyl lettering um, that'll withstand the elements and um, things like that. Um, and again, to kind of go back uh, to what would be featured on each one of these sides, you'd have that indigenous history on one side. On the other side, you'd have how that neighborhood came to be, how it got its name, things of that nature. And then that third side would be sort of present day 
how people, you know, what those nuances that, that people feel important about. And then on each side, you'd have a QR code um, that you could scan with your smartphone and it would bring you to the near West side partners website, that specific area. And you would be able to read more in depth on, you know, all of these historical elements, um, things like that. There was also um, someone brought up like an events page. So you could see like a calendar of events that were happening in the neighborhood. If there was like a fresh market or something going on, um, something like that. Um, so then in terms of, you know, each one of these will be off of the ground so they won't collect any trash. Um, so the right side, we're, we're missing our legs over there, but we'll, we'll add those in and make sure that's understood. Um, they're a steel structure and um, any elements that seem a little bare uh, or empty are intentionally left that way so that for each neighborhood, we can embellish the signs to customize them um, specifically, you know, for what people are, are seeing what is important to that neighborhood. Um, so basically each one of these structures, whether it's the one on the left or the one on the right that is chosen, these are the base line elements or structure that would go in. And then we would add in, you know, more flourishes or, you know, let's say it's cold spring. Maybe there's more uh, horse elements because there was a race track, a horse track, um, you know, things like that. And then as far as color, uh, what we're trying to do here is establish a strong visual element structure and not get caught up on color because the color can be added and decided upon later. Um, so we wanna make sure that we've got a strong structure uh, in black and white before we, or a strong design before we proceed with color because a lot of times you can get hung up on, you know, what colors are what and this and that. Um, so Andre, you wanna go ahead and talk about stuff? Well, I think you covered a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think going over like the, kind of the embellishments of the concepts and what makes them, what the opportunities that we have right now to kind of go forward is when we're looking at the left, uh, three-sided um, signage, a uh, gateway element on 005. Um, this one, we were kind of looking at it as being a little bit more um, uh, playing with a positive and negative space and a little bit more of the line weight um, visually when you see it. So as we're looking at it, you can see that it's not as um, compact or heavy visually as uh, 003. And so with that one, it gives us a lot of opportunities to really look at refined lines with scroll work or laser cut elements or playing with um, different embellishments along the middle work. Right now you see, as Brandy was describing, is the skeleton element of the actual gateway uh, marker. Um, but when we get into it, we're gonna start changing up some of those materials so they have more visual texture. So they have some more of the historical references. Those scroll elements on the top and the bottom will have a little bit more uh, visual texture as well as the bars that are uh, suspended off the um, points of the sign or the sides of the sign. Those will have a lot more his, you know, texture. They'll speak kind of of the heritage of uh, Milwaukee and the, um, a lot of the traditional design elements that were put in a lot of these neighborhoods back when they were being developed. Um, the roof line has an opportunity for laser cut elements or design components that could speak of the neighborhood, whether it's um, Concordia's neighborhoods in their uh, columns, or if it's, you know, Cold Spring and their uh, horse or the horse track, uh, or even Pigsville and some of their history of the farms or the indigenous wildlife that was there at one time. Um, I think those are really good opportunities as well as in that area of the uh, arch on the top or in the corners. The Spudnuck element, we still have, um, I, some neighborhoods, as we were saying, loved it, some neighborhoods hate it. I think there's an opportunity there um, because we thought of this as being an element that could tie everything together, much like the near west side um, uh, logo. And that's kind of where we uh, bounced it off of that. 
um, we were thinking of having seven spheres. So it's the connection of it all. And then taking those L those spheres and making embellishments on them, whether we were carving into them, uh, casting uh, resin elements that represent the neighborhoods, uh, cutting out of metal and changing up those forms. So there was kind of a placeholder and we kind of saw it as like a weather vane slash cupola. Um, but it, it was an opportunity to make them personal and connect to the community. Um, when we're looking at 003, the right side, uh, the four-sided um, gateway marker, um, we were playing off of some of the architecture that was in the community, a lot of arched doorways, domed roofs, um, those architectural elements, the spheres were an opportunity for embellishments, giving it extra visual texture. Um, a lot of the rectangular spaces are opportunities for us to do inlays or uh, low relief layered elements that will give, uh, that could be uh, pictorial elements that are the narrative to the community and its history. Um, they could also be abstract um, design elements that play off of the architectural um, uh, hit, uh, housing and buildings in the neighborhood. But we were leaving that kind of open to get the feedback from the community and see what those opportunities were. Um, it being a four-sided sign, there's a lot of information that potentially can be put into those four sides, but at the same time, this can be reduced. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, jam-packed full of information. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity that's there. It's a little more um, bold and yet subtle. Uh, and I think the two uh, opportunities between the two items are pretty diverse and yet uh, uniform in the way we would produce them. Uh, thank you both for sharing so much about these designs. Um, we, it's just been really awesome to, to hear neighbors' thoughts. Um, and I'll say, uh, because we are in a webinar format, if you do have questions, please use the question and answer function um, and add in um, your question there. Um, or if you're on Facebook, add it in the comments so we make sure we can get to those. Um, I know one question people have had is about maintenance. Um, and I will say we are from near West side partners side, uh, we are working with DPW to hopefully have these uh, primarily on city owns lands um, so that near West side partners would be responsible for the maintenance of these. Um, but when talking about the the painting process, um, how how will that be maintained? Uh, what materials are y'all using to ensure longevity there. So Working on this, it is, most of the structure is made out of mild steel. So obviously corrosion is a concern. We'll be using a um, iron primer paint, base, primer base uh, that will, that is pretty common practice in public spaces and outdoor spaces to seal off the metal, as well as uh, we will then be using an epoxy coat paint, the two-part epoxy paint on the surface, which will be easily um, re reapplied down the road, but it also handles well to um, fading in uh, you know, high sunshine, high UV exposure. So that's kind of the approach that we're looking at right now. Um, obviously color hasn't been uh, discussed yet. So we will have to look into some of those colors to make sure they're as UV strong as uh, we, we will need them to be, um, but that hasn't really been uh, of question yet. Yeah, and I think we'll get to that in the second portion um, where we have more of a finalized design and then folks can talk about um, what kind of colors they'd like to see and things like that. And then I think I wanna just add some note about uh, how we would proceed in terms of um, embellishment opportunities for each neighborhood. I think Andre and I were thinking that we do like, you know, three to five different custom elements that uh, have been spoken about by the community as well as our own research. And then they can pick, you know, maybe it's all five or it's three or, you know, something like that that can then add their personal touch to each one of their neighborhood markers. Um, you know, and that's also, I guess, including those, some of those low relief elements we were talking about as well, the laser cut, um, pieces and or resin cast charms, uh, 
whether we're keeping the Sputnik or we're not, we might need to do a show of hands <laughs> or like a final count or something. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to add that as a as another note. Thank you both. Yeah, and I'll say on the, the history portion, um, right now we uh, have some, some graduate students at Marquette doing some research um, and putting together those historical elements, those short uh, little clips of the history, about 50 words. Um, and in our secondary meetings, those March meetings that we'll be hosting um, primarily on evenings during the second and third week in March, um, we'll have each neighborhood review the text, um, give some feedback on what should or shouldn't be included, um, and then as well as kind of uh, opening up the broader histor historical context as well um, to whatever page it's linked to with that QR code. Um, so that's all still um, a, work in, a work in progress there. Um, so today we're talking about the markers, but also um, Avenues West and, and their marker there. Um, Avenues West uh, has quite a few churches and schools, um, not just on Marquette's campus, but uh, Redeemer Lutheran and Milwaukee Academy of Science um, as well as quite a few others. Uh, most of our schools are in Avenues West, but um, how might y'all incorporate kind of um, the educational and uh, church assets that are in Avenues West into that particular marker? Oh, I feel like that's like a back pocket trick question. That's a sneak one. We haven't even uh, thought about that portion of it. Um, but yeah, I think right away, um, I would imagine with the design on the left, we could use uh, all three sides of those sidebars and do some laser cut uh, steeples or elements that could represent multiple different um, churches or schools or things like that. We can kind of add so there'd be sort of multiple peaks to the top of that, or even if they were inlaid into each one of the triangles, so that pyramid shape could then be filled in with, um, you know, visual low relief sculpture elements that that would also help signify that as well. Um, and I think we could, you know, obviously do the same for the one on the right. We can add in um, those details and things that that really kind of speak in the symbolism um, to each each uh, one of those churches. I mean, I've churches or schools, I mean, I don't know that there's room to include all of them per se, but maybe if there were some significant um, architectural elements or symbols um, that we could all agree upon, or, um, you know, we could suggest some some artistic combination of things, um, you know, something like that. So I don't know, what do you think, Andre? I, I mean, that's exactly where my mind goes right off the bat. Uh, but I think that's also, you know, that speaks of the organizations of the community. And I think when I, when we look at that neighborhood and its development in the city, um, I'm sure that there's plenty of businesses and, you know, that spoke of how that neighborhood was developed you know, beyond what we're seeing the remnants of these days. And so I would really like to kind of tap into that a little bit more and look at what we can incorporate so that it's not strictly church heavy or um, uh, religious heavy, but I think it, you know that still does speak of the people of the past um, of, the, of the community and how those neighborhoods were developed. So I would, um, I think those are opportunities uh, to tie that in. I think you know, you know, looking at what some of the uh, writers are going to put together as well for the history will be something that I think tying that in visually, whether it's sim symbolic elements um, combined with some architectural elements uh, that creates that story, that narrative, um, that entry that then will loop back to the information. Yeah, thank you both for those great responses um, after I put y'all on the spot. So great, <laughs> great work uh, there. So um, with that, we'll open it up to questions um, and see if anybody has any, go ahead and put them in the chats um, or see if we've had any pop up on Facebook. Do you want me to continue to share the screen? Um, you're probably okay now to okay. take it down, yeah. Hey, Elizabeth, there's nothing on Facebook yet. So I think um, 
If we don't have any questions there now, I can continue to monitor the Facebook page. And if any questions do come up for either Andre or Brandon, we can make sure to connect um, the uh, question asker with uh, one of our fabulous artists, or we can uh, make sure that any questions that come up after this webinar do get answered, um, no matter what. Perfect, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and so with that, yeah, definitely still send in those questions and we'll get them answered. Um, and if we wanna go to the next, next slide. slide there, Barb. Um, just here's kind of our schedule for our round two neighborhood marker meetings. Um, so Brandon and Andre are gonna work over the next couple of weeks to update the design of the marker for each individual neighborhood. Um, and then we'll host those meetings the second and third week in March. Um, so we'll be getting this out on Facebook and over email and um, all the other uh, avenues to try to get people to attend. So please share with your neighbors um, about these meetings. All of them will be uh, hosted on Zoom. Um, and you can email me at ccc at nearwestsidepartners.org. Um, if you have um, any questions or uh, want the login information. Um, but with that, I think I'll turn it over to Barb to kind of wrap us up here. Cool. Well, thanks um, to the team here. It's been a busy couple weeks uh, helping inform neighbors and it's been a fun few weeks as well. So look forward to seeing uh, Brandon and Andre in another month to um, find out what what, what creativity they can come up with and we will move on. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let us know. You can contact Elizabeth or Elizabeth, uh, Anna at the CCC at nearwestsidepartners.org. You're always welcome to contact me at Barb or Barb coordinator two at nearwestsidepartners.org. Um, always, we, um, we are a non-for-profit and We'll take any community support provided. So here are a few options if you are so inclined to uh, be in the giving mood today or in, in the future. And then just a reminder again, next week's webinar is going to be a partnership with Advocates Aurora Health. And they are doing a live Facebook event at noon. And you can tune into that on Facebook by typing in at Aurora Advocate Health. And then you can see what the doctors have to say about the vaccine and probably help everyone understand um, why it's so important to get that done. Uh, so that's next week's webinar. And I think that wraps us up. Yep, it does. So uh, again, to everybody that was able to participate today, to those of you that will be watching the video, we appreciate your taking time and um, being part of the process and let us know if you have any questions. Make it a great day, everyone.